What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out an add-on that helps us set up our camera so that we can model inside of Blender from a photo. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this add-on is called FSpy and you can download it by going to fspy.io. Um, I think it used to be called Blam or something like that. There was an older name of it and it's changed names, but now it's FSpy. Io. And so it's an open source software that's free to download that basically helps you set up all your perspective lines inside of your model so that you can quickly use a photo um, as a modeling reference. And so first of all, let's talk about how to set this up because it's a little bit confusing. So you need two things when you download this add-on. So there's a, an installer for the standalone program that you're going to use in order to set up your perspective lines. And then there's also an importer that you need to download and install in Blender. So start off by downloading this file right here. Um, so this is going to be the standalone. You can just click on this download button right here and you're going to download the one that's appropriate for you. I think, um, I think I use this first one right here. And so what you want to do is you want to download that. So it's going to download a file like this and you want to extract it and then you want to go into the folder that you've extracted, scroll down, there's an option in here for FSpy. And so when you run FSpy, what that's going to do is that's going to open up an application on your computer that looks like this. And so let's talk a little bit, so let's go ahead and bring in an image just so you can get an idea of the way this works and then we'll talk about how to install the importer in Blender. So what this does is this is really good for matching perspective lines for photos. And so I've downloaded a barn image from uh, Wikipedia Commons and I'm going to bring that in. So you can see how it asks you to just drop an image or a project here. Well I'm going to drag my photo right here and it's going to import that image. And so what this does is this allows you to set up your perspective lines so that they run to your different vanishing points. So if you remember a vanishing point would be like if you were to draw a line along this edge right here and an edge along and align along this edge right here, what you would have is you would basically have a point off to the side where things would vanish, right? Where those lines would intersect and things would vanish. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up um, so that you can use these lines in order to quickly model inside a blender. So the way that we wanna do that is we wanna start by taking these points and we wanna set them along the perspective lines of our image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this to this corner and this to this corner right here. So you can see how what I'm doing is I'm aligning these based on the perspective lines inside of this image. And so usually when you're working with exterior models, the better perspective you have, like this is a perfect perspective right here because you can actually see what directions the perspective would go. Um, if you get a photo of a barn that's like straight on or something like that, it's not going to work as well. But you can see how I'm just taking this and I'm just aligning these with my perspective lines inside of my image. And so the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click and drag this three point axis to this corner right here. And so this point is going to be where this photo aligns with the ground plane inside of Blender. And so there's other things you can do too. There's multiple different kinds of vanishing points in here and other things like that. We're not gonna worry about those too much for right now. I'm just gonna drag this up just a little bit because what that's doing is that's basically moving my blue axis so that it runs straight up and down, right? So this aligns with this corner of my barn. These align with my perspective lines. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all this information and save it in a camera view that we can then import using the importer in Blender. And so for right now, we're gonna go ahead and call this good. And we're just gonna go up to file and we're just gonna do a save as. And so I'm gonna save this as FSpy for YouTube and click on save. And what that's done is that's created an FSpy file that can be downloaded into Blender and used to set up your camera view that you can use as a reference image. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go over into Blender. So we're gonna go into Blender and the first thing we need to do is we need to download and install the importer, right? 
Um, so the importer is going to be the uh, basically what we can use to do an import of that camera information and we need to download and install that. So to do that, and I'm going to show you from the beginning how to get here because it's a little bit confusing, we need to scroll down on this page and we want to download the official FSpy importer add-on. So we're going to click on this button right here in order to do that. So what that's going to do is that's going to take us into a GitHub folder. So this is where people get a little bit confused because what they do is they uh, either download this whole thing, so this entire folder by clicking on download and clicking on download zip. What they need to do is they need to scroll down and there's an option right here for download the latest version. And so when you click on download the latest version, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take you a f to a folder with a zip file. And this should be a fairly small file. It's only like five or six kilobytes. So if you're getting a file that's like 40 megabytes, you're downloading the wrong thing. But you wanna download this FSpy Blender and then whatever the most current version is. In this case, it's 1.0.3. So I'm just gonna click on this to download it. And then we're going to install that inside of Blender. So we're just gonna go into Blender. We're gonna do a edit, preferences, and we wanna install that zip file. So you're gonna look for the FSpy Blender 1.0.3 file that you downloaded. So when you double click on that now, import FSpy project will show up in here and you can click on this. And so as soon as you've enabled this, we can now import the FSpy file. So to do that, all we have to do is just go to File, Import, and you should now have an option in here for FSpy. So now you can just click on FSpy, and you can go find that file that you saved earlier. So I'm gonna go into Videos, Add-on, Tutorials, FSpy, and we wanna find this FSpy for YouTube file. So I'm just going to click on import FSY file. And what that's done is that's imported your image and notice how it's currently aligned your image and your camera view so that basically your perspective lines, you can see right here running off to the side, running off to the side are aligned with this image. So one thing you wanna make sure that you do because you're probably gonna zoom in is you wanna tap the N key and make sure you've turned off lock camera to view so that um, your camera isn't moving around. You want your camera to be kind of fixed at this point. But if you look at this, you can see that this is now aligned with the axes inside of Blender and so it's really easy to start adding objects and modeling based on this image. One thing to note is if you orbit out of this, you can see how you're going to lose that, right? Like now I'm out of my camera view and I can't see that image anymore. If you ever wanna get back to that, just type the zero key on your numpad just to get back into that camera view. And so the only time you can see this is if you're actually within that camera view. But now we can come in here and we can model, and I'm gonna delete out my default model, um, but we can now model based on this image. So the way that I would do that is I would start by doing a shift A and just adding a cube, right? So I'm gonna move a cube in here, I'm gonna move it up just like this. And you may wanna rotate out of here and move this so that it's aligned with your corner point right here, and then type the zero key to move back into that. And you may have to do some fine adjustment. But now we can start modeling this so that it matches up with the image. So, and I find the easiest way to do this is to type the Z key and go into wireframe mode. And then I just tab into edit mode and I start making changes. So for example, I can select this face and I can move it along this axis. So I could do the same thing for this face. And so notice how when I make these changes, this is actually aligning with the image inside of my model. So because of that, I can use the proportions of this image to model out my building. So I could then add an edge loop right here. I could take that edge, move it up. I could take these faces and I could extrude them up so that they align right here. And so you can see how basically what I'm doing is I'm just using this photo as a reference image. So you could come through and you could add as much detail as you wanted to um, using this photo. So then you could also come in here and maybe if you wanted to model out like the doors or something like that, I could add an edge loop in here and align it with the top of my door 
focus like this. And you can see how you could also rotate out of this and look at it in like solid mode if you wanted to, to get a better look at the way this works. And then you could type the zero key to move back into the FSpy camera in order to keep modeling. So this is a great tool for getting our proportions right and modeling from photos. If you're interested, we could talk a little bit more about maybe how to use textures from the images in order to texture the faces or possibly how to do like an interior image, something like that. But leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see more of, what you're confused about with this add-on. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.